Hey Abhishek, Hi. thanks for taking time Hi. for uh, an interview or interaction with uh, work. Okay, um, so uh, audience, I just wanted to introduce Abhishek Nath. He's the managing director for uh, Exora Corporation, and uh, you know he's been doing a lot of stuff, a lot of innovative stuff, which is uh, uh, catching up uh, as uh, national initiatives. Uh, so Abhishek, can you can you just uh, talk Th about you, uh, how you started all this and you know? How you dream about all these uh, initiatives? <laughs> so, so it's been a, a long journey. It's been a journey for the last 18 years uh, since the time I passed out of school, I served uh, college, and uh, it's always been like being an entrepreneur was always a passion. When I started my entire career, I was a hotel management grad, and then started working with the Taj Group of hotels in uh, Bombay. And since then, I was like, let's do something of our own, something something different. So I quit hotels after five years and. I think around 2002, mm -hmm. and then started a restaurant business of my own. Okay. Uh, very strangely, life is not that simple when you start something of your own. You've been with a large hotel group and you want to do something of your own. And way back in 2002, I said we'll start doing packaged food. Okay. Uh, very different. India had not seen packaged food at that particular time. Uh, those boxes which you see, uh, container food container pa package boxes which you see very commonly at various restaurants in Hyderabad or across the country today, um, I would say that we were the first ones to get that to India and mm. started selling packaged food to various places. I still remember the first day I, I was daily being able to sell one box in a day. People, oh. people were not really used to packaged food home delivered in okay. 2002. Uh, then I said let's do corporate catering as well because there has to be some kind of substantial amount of income coming in in case you want to grow a business. So I, I remember sitting outside uh, one of the large corporate houses in Hyderabad. I think mm -hmm. it just started off that time. Okay. And waited for hours together to meet an admin manager okay. uh, to get a corporate business or a corporate catering business. Uh, the first order I got was uh, uh, catering to some biryanis. I guess it was around some hundred biryanis which I had to get to that corporate house. I came back. Okay. Uh, spoke to my little team of cooks, I would not even say chefs, cooks. Uh, let's be something innovative. So we uh, discussed and decided we'll buy handis, okay. make biryani, we'll put it on those handis and then supply it to the corporate house. We did that and the people people loved what we did. Uh, next day I got a call from the same corporate saying that why don't you start uh, doing a regular catering supply at this corporate. Okay. Which was a big order, right? It was around 200, 250 people which you needed to cater every day. Things started changing. A package box, uh, mm. which I wanted to start, uh, started, started, started doing moving really well. And uh, as time progressed, I said, let's diversify into another city. And uh, went and invested in a property in Goa. Mm -hmm. and said let's take biryani to Goa. So that's how yeah, I've heard young, young, that. young, <laughs> young minds you want to do something different and uh, so I did that. Um, so I started off, um, I wanted to start, I invested money in Goa and in between things didn't go very well in Hyderabad, I lost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, things went down, down the hill in Hyderabad and I was left with only my Goa business. Uh, when I went back to Goa it was a struggle because the place which I had taken was small and uh, uh, now suddenly I realized that I have become a waiter, a cook, a chef <laughs> or whatever you call it. We were all in one because there was hardly anything which was left. I had lost a lot of money in Hyderabad. Uh, bad choices in terms of uh, depending on people or various things. I would not really like to blame. It was a big learning as to what we did. Uh, so I went back to Goa and uh, started this business and uh, soon or soon I started this and I think people started coming, they started appreciating what we were doing but it was a big time struggle because we had nothing there. Right. Uh, and um, a year later I managed building another restaurant in Goa, mm -hmm. so we had two and things started moving the direction which I expected to do. One fine day I see a lot of people walking into a restaurant and sitting on the table and planning something up on the on the table. So they were sketching some, there were drawings happening and things happening around. Uh, I went across to them and I was like, what are you guys doing? And these guys like, you're building a hotel. I said, okay. okay. <laughs> sitting in a restaurant like this, you're sketching something, hotels are not built like this. So, so he said, do you know how to build hotels? Are you to commenting this manner? I said, yes, I'm a hotelier and I know hotels cannot be built like this. Uh, what are you doing? 
uh, he said okay fine why don't you come and meet me in the evening mm-hmm. every time he called me over in the evening i used to get a catering order and i never went because for me that catering order was really <laughs> important, important and rather than going and spending time with a gentleman who i didn't know so finally a couple of calls and uh, i said fine i come over and meet and i walked into that room uh, it was in a large hotel in goa mm-hmm. uh, way back in 2003 or 4 if i'm not mistaken and uh, there were a lot of brits and a lot of uh, color in the room people sitting across presentation going on uh, a massive uh, team discussing about building a large corporate hotel and i was like a young guy at that time okay. in early early 20s uh, and i was like what what the hell is happening i really don't understand all this uh, mm. uh, so I, he asked me see listen this is what we are building it's got to be a massive property and the works over the world and i said no i'm still not convinced so <laughs> 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 yeah, like have you could man you are saying that these many people in the room and they are doing something really very very nice which is going to be come up coming up and you're still saying it's not going to be working and why do you say that why did you come out that i was really agitated as to why is this guy talking nonsense that's what he felt so he takes me out of the room and Uh, we sit across over a cup of coffee, and he's like, "What do you really want?" Mm-hmm. I said, "Listen, I am not here to wa- want or ask something. You came across to my place. You invited me over here. I did come, but I feel you're wasting your money. This is not how a property can be made. I don't understand the way they are planning is the right plan, and rather you're going to be investing much more than what is required. You will want to build a five-star hotel, but mm-hmm. uh, there has to be some foundation, and there has to be some." plan which has to be right with a clear ROI and mitigated plan so that we know what we are building uh, having said that we had a discussion for an hour's time i left back i was busy in my own little world of my own restaurant uh, fighting my own battles and i get a call from him again next day okay okay can you can, can you meet i said fine why not so he actually takes me to a site and that was uh, crazy so So he, this is a beachside property. I'm going to I'll name the property as we talk. <laughs> and it had uh, litter. It had grass. It had. Uh, it it was in a messed up place, a totally broken down huts. And I said, "Is this the property you're talking about?" He said, "Yes, this is the property I'm going to talk about." Took a little stick and started marking things on the ground and saying, "This is what the hotel is going to be." I said, "Listen, this is not like this, man. Hotel cannot be made like this." But anyway, the property is good. Location is fantastic. It's messed up, and he had timeline of building it in just in six months, which oh. was crazy. We had to get all our legal permissions. Property had to be built. A uh, lot of back end operational setups which have to be done you know in a hotel it's just not just building an infrastructure it's about services it's building a plan a lot of things which have to be done um, finally we came out and i was scratching my head i said is this guy trying to build a hotel out of nowhere and just in 6 months and he's not even got a plan which is right so in that evening again the same presentation took on and we were all discussing i actually went out lost my school and i went out and told him listen but i i can't do this it's not my uh, take this guy is have a different thought process i have a different thought process so he looked at me stayed at me for a while and said okay i get rid of everybody will you be able to build this hotel in 6 months i said the first question i asked him is this why me hmm. why do you select me uh, you might get better talent you might get stalwarts from the industry who could actually build a good hotel for you why me he said you are a mad guy You're a maverick. You you are crazy. Nobody has actually walked up first to me and told me that things will not work out. You are the only guy who has been constantly saying this. So what's your plan? I said, give me a day. I'll come back and tell you what has to be done. I walked out of the room and started wondering why and what is it the right step which I need to take in life? Uh, do I really step out of my? I had already lost a lot of money. Okay. Do I step out of my little? Cooking of my own restaurant, which I'm planning to grow. I put in a lot of hard work there. Uh, it was hard work to a level which was unimaginable, right? Because there was. Do I come from a fantastic family? I didn't want to go back to dad and ask him money because I've lost a lot. Uh, so I I thought, let's see what has to happen. Uh, so I said, fine. I went back. In an hour's time, I said, I'll take it up. He said, fine, fantastic. So six months, let's build the hotel. I said fair. Let's do that in six months. So next morning, I had a meeting with 
uh, few architects and uh, entire plan as to what has to happen. Uh, started sitting and discussing what the entire property has to come out. And six months later, we inaugurated a property called the Hotel La Calypso, which is a five-star property up on the beach today, uh, valued at around 300 plus crores. Wow. Uh, invested just around 10 crores. So it didn't come up. It, it was just up. not a plan. It mm-hmm. just it did come up, and it created pipes all across the city because it had the only property which had a fantastic beach view, mm-hmm. uh, 70 plus rooms in six months uh, six months of time. Uh, it had a history that whoever, whichever owner took over that property uh, or rather wanted to buy could never set up the hotel. So, so there was a journey of six months. Six months, I think I must have not slept. Uh, I was hospitalized twice uh, in between because of that sheer struggle and hard work which was going on. But uh, I guess uh, we got it right. I've hired a fantastic team. In fact, the team is still with me. Uh, rather working with me or even if they're working out, they correspond with me on a daily basis. So the property came up, uh, it's got a casino today, mm-hmm. it's got a 5 star license and it's valued 100 times or maybe 500 times than what it actually came up that time, particular time. So things went well. Uh, one fine day, uh, as life is, life is not always hunky-dory, I had to put up my boots. I said, mm-hmm. I need to walk out of this place now. So around 2007, I quit uh, Lucky uh, for various reasons. Mm-hmm. And came back to the hotel industry because uh, when you quit and you're on an extreme high, high right? You you're tasting different part of life altogether. <clears throat> In terms of from from knowing people who's who of town to everything because you're leading a flagship hotel. Right. Uh, you came. Back, I stepped back and started working with the uh, Taj Group again. Uh, mm-hmm. So so I came back to my old uh, property, started working. Obviously, it was like a different step or a lower step, whatever you call it because uh, what you used to earn there to what you were earning here can never match because you, you, you've been a more like a co-founder at a particular property. So come back to the uh, corporate world, mm-hmm. uh, came back there and a couple of months later, uh, I had family reasons, my dad was not well and I had to move out of Pune. Then this is, where, this, is, uh, this is the time I was based in Pune for a while. Came back to Hyderabad, uh, suddenly had one call uh, one fine day because I was desperate that I want a job in Hyderabad, I want to do something in Hyderabad because dad's here, I want to be with him. Uh, so I got a call one day from a company called Johnson Controls and trust okay. me, being a hotelier, I didn't know what the corporate world is. I didn't know what the IT world is, I would say, in the right direction. I didn't know uh, what these guys really do in these massive buildings. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> so, so, so I got this call and uh, the only thing which was attracting me on the call as fine, it's in Hyderabad and they're going to get me to Hyderabad for interview. I said, fair, fair. I come yeah. to Hyderabad, spend some time at home and uh, I'm going to uh, get to see my dad and I'll spend two, three days and go for this interview. So I landed in Hyderabad. Uh, I just forgot I had an interview. They had actually got me to Hyderabad. <laughs> Being honest, I went home and said, we get a call. I, we had an interview scheduled and you were supposed to be in you, we got you right. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, yeah, 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 I have to be there. So I, I rushed, drove to Hightech City and uh, this is, I was coming to Hyderabad very frequently but never right. visited the Hightech City right. because I was not living in Hyderabad. And this place was changed, more buildings, right, your mind space, huge properties coming up, gigantic buildings. Uh, so I walked in and they said the CEO of uh, CSA, Computer Science Corporation, wants to meet me. Okay. I said, fine. So I walk into this cabin and I think for three hours he asked me questions all about the hotel industry. So I was a little perplexed, thinking that is it a hotel uh, interview <laughs> or is it this corporate <laughs> <laughs> admin, admin cop role uh, kind of an interview, real estate kind of a role. So anyway, so. He selected me and I got a call back saying that, join in. So I said, uh, yeah, I will join in because it's Hyderabad. I had no clue, trust me, I had no clue as to what, what role I, I do. Though I was the head of, uh, I was the area head or Hyderabad head, they selected me as uh, uh, for Hyderabad. So, but I walked into the office, it was a cultural shock. Mm-hmm. I used to sit in a nice swanky cabin in the hotel industry here. I was sitting in that open, a uh, seating kind of an atmosphere. Lunch was a biggest shock because you need to go stand in line to take your food. That's how corporates work, right? right. So 
So I went there to the office and uh, first couple of days it was like everybody came across to me and told me some jargons. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, abbreviations of all the work they do and I have no clue about what these guys are talking about. Uh, a couple of them even uh, started talking in the local language thinking that I didn't know Telugu and started bitching about it. This young lady <laughs> has come and joined us, doesn't know what he's going to be doing, I have no idea. And you had only uh, guys who have been engineers, um, yeah. you know, all of them who have spent a lot of years in the similar kind of field, uh, coming back to me and saying, talking about UPS failure, generator sets, and man, I have no idea what, what all this is all about. We have managed hotels, but hotels are much smaller than what, what uh, these businesses are all about. So I, I was getting a little pushed back because I could not really take a decision. And wherever I used to sit, I used to see people uh, looking at me at a very strange look because under me, I had uh, people who were reporting into me were actually six, seven years elder as yeah, well as more experienced. Yeah. Uh, so, so they were all looking at me and giving me looks as if that why the hell has the company hired such a young guy who has no knowledge about this particular industry. So, 45 days, I think I must have just read, looked at all what I could do. Uh, I still remember, maybe two months later, I called for a meeting and mm -hmm. I spoke exactly the facility management language in Telugu. Oh, uh, nice. So, people were like, man, we pissed <laughs> about him, we abused him in this language and he's speaking this language today. What the hell is happening? So, things started changing. Things started changing because I had that trait from my hotel industry of being very personal mm -hmm. about understanding human behavior. Uh, so, for example, one of my director bodies, who very senior, never wanted to listen to me. I called him one morning uh, and I said, uh, "Hey, can you wish your wife happy birthday?" He's like, "Why the hell have you called? What is it?" And he's, he just hung up. Uh, 10, 20 minutes later, he gives me a call and says, "Thank you so much." I said, "What happened?" I forgot it was her birthday. I said, fantastic. So the eyes broke, started talking to me, understanding who I am. Mm -hmm. And six months later, we realized our internal customer satisfaction scores, which is in the corporate world, doubled. We actually okay. started getting better. Things started improving. And because what, uh, why the company got me in was to build that relationship. That team and relationship. Build that uh, yeah, that's uh, customer important. satisfaction or customer behavior. Uh, or the way we responded to the uh, to the world. That was that's the reason why they got me in. And by then I had understood what the DG sets meant, uh, UPS meant, how acceleration matrix happened, what are SLAs. You know, I had understood all that and things started moving and looking up. Uh, I started growing. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, um, from an area manager, I started leading the entire business. Um, while uh, by around uh, End of 2009 or 2010, I was a junior director. So, so things started uh, moving up, and so I took a break from uh, 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 from Johnson Controls, uh, uh, and then went up and joined this company called Uninor or Telenor, and I was their head of administration. Mm -hmm. uh, same organization became head of trade, but didn't understand what trade is. I'm being honest. I don't understand mathematics to that level. <laughs> I didn't understand uh, what it is, but it was an experience, I guess. Uh, learning all of these uh, things which I got and took it in my stride, I went back to Johnson Controls as a director mm -hmm. and in the same organization became the director of West Asia. Okay. Uh, so, so led the path and uh, it, it took me to a different leap of life altogether from managing a city to managing a country and then managing a few uh, or being a part of management of various uh, various larger uh, right. nations and countries. So things started changing. Uh, I started understanding how corporate world really works and then slowly you become more of a strategic guy, a decision maker, mm -hmm. uh, leading a different uh, burden of life altogether. Uh, and over then, then one fine morning, uh, I was in Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. I uh, uh, thought it's time when I should explore further, further more things. So Johnson Controls uh, was a fantastic organization, or rather is a fantastic organization, taught me a lot. But it was more towards a different uh, arena of life. So there, there was this organization called OCS, which mm -hmm. I joined, uh, which was more deep, right? it was more services. So I wanted to taste and understand how work happens in the similar field, more towards managing people and actually being a, a, a team which delivers. 
So, so it is a self delivery of uh, contracts. So I just went and joined them again as a director. I was leading India uh, mm-hmm. for operations and business development. Uh, and having done that uh, for a couple of years, uh, understanding business on both the fronts, uh, both of the strategic as well as on ground mm-hmm. delivery, uh, I said, let's quit and start my own enterprise. Uh, so again, Hyderabad obviously because it's your hometown, people know you are around. Uh, real estate value is much cheaper than what Bombay is because I was based in Bombay all my life in terms of the corporate uh, right. journey. Uh, came to Hyderabad. Uh, goodness is that uh, one phone call to all your peers uh, that uh, you're starting something of your own and would you like to join the journey? Everybody said yes. Um, yeah, that's, the best part. that's the yeah. best part. Fortunately for me, 18 years of my career, uh, I guess every single person who has worked with me is still working with me. So which is which is fantastic. So so they joined in. We started this enterprise called Exora from a very small place uh, somewhere in Sikandrabad. I first time walked into their office. I said, "Listen, I've been leading. <laughs> now you're getting me into a five by five pigeon <laughs> hole setup. This is not how we can really uh, work and really grow." Uh, but um, as you say, you need to uh, understand the entrepreneurial life mm-hmm. as to a corporate life is very different. Sooner you understand that it's faster and easier that you, you understand the nut, uh, nut and bearings of the entire uh, business. So, you know, so we had to cut back frills mm-hmm. and we are no frill life which you need to transform yourself because the psychological transformation there is the most important, important part thing. of it. Right. Because if you don't get that right, Trust me, you might be living in a paradise or rather a fool's paradise that's going to happen, it'll never happen. So it took me a while. Um, we started it off, we packed some business. Uh, a couple of months later, we realized we lost everything. Because we were living or we were trying to build exactly what you have. They built it over hundreds of years. It's not going to happen in three months. Plus, you have to have that kind of a fund mm-hmm. to keep pumping in to really build that. It's, it's, it's very, very difficult, very difficult. So we realized we need to cut all our frills, understand what the delivery models is. And next important thing which came as a learning to me is you could be anybody of a large organization, but you are because of that organization. It's yes. not because of you existing there. You might garner some business, but you can't really take a lot more business. And it's unethical to go back and to those customers who were you were performing or working with with the larger organization that you couldn't take that. So we didn't want to do that. But people don't give you business because you have just started it. They want to give you business depending upon the uh, what the organization itself has done. So Exora has to be larger than what Abhishek is or Abhishek cannot be larger than what Exora is. Right? And right. if you don't understand that, the company has to be larger as an entity than an individual. And in case the individual becomes larger than the organization, the organization is never going to grow. That's true. So, so we, when we started understanding that, it took us a while and said, listen, as a credential of an organization is what has to become stronger. The foundation of the organization has to become stronger. Each and every individual of the organization has to feel and breathe the organization so that organization itself becomes an entity. Okay. Right. So Exora itself has to be an entity. Exora is dictating us. Today we are working for Exora. Uh, it could not be that I am Exora. And that's the worst thing to happen. So so we understood that. Even today, if somebody asks me, what do you do? I work for Exora. And that's how it is. And that's how it is for the entire organization at so we realized uh, things were not moving. Uh, we switched, changed our gears, and it is our money which we were funding it. We went, we we actually not gone and diluted our organization even till date. Uh, we started bagging more business, doing it more systematically, mm-hmm. uh, getting onto the ground yourself to understand what exactly it was, and uh, it grew. It started moving. Uh, things started moving one by one. The FM business, which is the facility management business, with the idea we were trying to work with, started coming into light. Customers started understanding and believing into us. Things started moving. But as somebody who is always, um, I would say, edgy, who wants to do something different, um, I'm, I'm not a, I'm, I'm being honest, I'm not a patient guy, right? Uh, I'm not in the right, wrong sense, but I'm, I'm like, I'm, I get paranoid in case something doesn't go right. So, so I like things to happen, things to move at a different speed, and I'm never contented, never, never contented to see, oh, that's done, oh, fantastic. So my, my mind starts thinking that, okay, if that's done, what next? How will it come in next? So, 
we said let's do something in the public domain. That's mm. where the entire thought started coming up. And the first thing uh, which came up out of our entire sessions or brainstorming sessions, which we said we will build a toilet. Reason why is because that was the most difficult area in the facility management field which we were doing. Mm-hmm. Managing the washroom because 99.9% of people complained the washrooms are not good. Yes. Or there was an issue in the washroom. So we said let's build something. So we started our journey of building a, a prefabricated washroom. We wanted to do something different. Uh, built a few, spoiled a few, uh, tensed because mm-hmm. we were wasting money. At mm-hmm. some point of time we realized that we are just blowing money. But there was also something in your subconscious mind that you were trying to do something right. You're trying to build something. You're trying to do it. Until the time you don't spoil or uh, you don't really come up with the right model, you are going to waste too many, yes. right? R&D is required. So we said, let's do it. Let's, let's start pushing it. And uh, we started building it. I went across to our IS officers and the commissioners in Hyderabad. I think Telangana is a fantastic state uh, with uh, the youngest startup state as our minister calls it. Uh, the IS officers here in this state specifically in JHMC are forthcoming. They want mm-hmm. to innovate and be a part of the new ecosystem of getting new things right. Uh, so there is, uh, so I worked across to a few of them and trying to explain what we do. They said, why don't you build up a model and show it to us? Okay. Uh, so we said, fine, fantastic, let's let's build a model. And we, we were already building one. So we got one avenue mm-hmm. to put up one structure. Uh, we said, well, uh, what do we call it? And uh, out of joint discussions, we came up with a name called Luke Okay. Uh, somebody suggested the name and I was like, Luke Cafe. It's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell will come to a washroom to eat? It's, it's not going to happen, right? So kept thinking, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? Uh, Luke Cafe. But then something was always saying this. The concept is washrooms. It's not the cafe. So it has to be the washroom first and the cafe, cafe. later. So Luke first and cafe next. Cafe later, yeah. yeah. But if your washrooms are going to be clean, people will come and eat. But if your washrooms are not clean, then nobody's going to eat. Let's look at it on the other side. You go to a cafe coffee day, you go to a barista, you go to any place. You put a washroom in there, but the concept they are trying to serve the coffee and not the washroom. Not the washroom. But the washroom exists. Even in that place, if the washroom is not going to be clean and stinking, and the entire coffee shop is going to be stinking, you're not going to go there. Yes. So it's, it's, it's very similar. But the scale in which they manage the washroom is very different because people are not coming there for a washroom. So we said, well, let's do it. Then obviously technology is something which intrigues all of us. So we said we have to have something different in terms of technology. Let's start innovating. Let's start talking. Uh, so I was reading about a couple of articles and said, uh, and then came up with this thing. The biggest challenge in the washroom is smell. Yes. Second biggest challenge is water. Mm-hmm. Spillage of water and consumption of water. So is there something which we can innovate which could actually sense smell? So. We started talking to a lot of people, understanding with our own tech teams as well, and we came up with an IoT which detects smell, detects ammonia basically. Human is got nothing but ammonia. So we did our R&D, we put it up there, and we got an entire sensing unit which could actually do uh, IoT uh, through IoT to sense smell, mm-hmm. uh, utilities in terms of water and electricity, and that data started helping us to understand what exactly is happening on the ground. So we started doing this R&D in office. Mm-hmm. with our own washrooms to understand whether this would actually work in the public domain. Second, we started wanted to understand which we are still working on is weight matrix in terms of dustbins, tissue mm-hmm. paper holders and soap dispensers. Mm-hmm. We said we will put IoT in each of these to understand if the volume goes up of a dustbin or the tissue paper gets empty yeah. uh, or the soap dispenser gets empty, you get an indication on your app. Then the person goes and cleans the washroom. Why, does, why do you really need a person standing there? So this is still in progress, but the first part is done. So we put the entire Lou Cafe up. We got the cafe right, the first one. We got the washrooms right, the IIT started working, and then went back. Rather, it was ready. The day of inauguration was up and running now. And we were told the Minister of the State would actually come and inaugurate it. Wow. We were thrilled. We were going to meet KTR for the first time. And uh, 
So we were absolutely thrilled to meet somebody who you hear on the television regularly. You hear the intellect he carries, the the persona he carries in terms of and the way he is actually helped Telangana mold as a startup state. So it was fantastic to meet a gentleman with a vision. So he came in. Uh, initially we were told five minutes, but he stayed on for 15 plus minutes, understood what exactly it is, and then said, "Why don't you scale it up?" Mm -hmm. This was the biggest uh, achievement we felt we had and he went and tweeted that mm -hmm. uh, look if it will be 100 plus in the city, things started moving. Uh, obviously in the government establishments you have to work your life through the tender systems. We went through the tender systems and today we are building over 90 plus in Hyderabad. Uh, we improved ourselves uh, over the journey. Uh, uh, again, I think uh, Telangana with the uh, leadership like KTR, so as well as the IS officers, is, is just phenomenal. The way they are molding the entire city at large. Uh, so we we built one, and now we've already have 20 in place. Uh, we've got a licensing indicators to each of these washrooms. Couple of the washrooms now get about 500 people on a daily basis. Right. We've been able to put a entire supply chain mechanism in terms of food in place. So a journey of year plus, I guess it's over 3,000 percent of growth in terms of uh, getting more washrooms in place. Getting more importantly, I think uh, you, you've uh, congratulations because you've also uh, become a national. I mean, this initiative become a national. Yes, so, uh, so it, it all started rolling up uh, because uh, I'll give you some stats uh, in India or rather globally. 99.9 uh, .9 percent washrooms do not see a day of night beyond six months. Reason is, uh, there is enough and more money in terms of CSR. Mm -hmm. Generally, washrooms are made through CSRs. And uh, most of these washrooms do not have an OPEX uh, element attached to it. People yes. give this CAPEX, they make a washroom, but they do not know who's going to really manage it or maintain it. That's where the challenge is. Now, New Cafe has a fantastic model. The revenue generated from the cafe Mm -hmm. substantiates the cleaning and the utilities Make for the washroom. So, and plus that element loo cafe, right? So if the cafe, if the loo is not going to be clean, people are not going to eat. So that drives the entire business towards clean, towards hygiene and it's been able to scale up. Having, then we had, uh, obviously we have got this Swachh Bharat initiative in, in India which is, which is growing, which is important. Uh, again, the statistics say that most of our diseases start originating from our washrooms and specifically the lifestyle, lifestyle oriented diseases. So, so, so washrooms became important. So we had uh, Mr. Jindal who is the director of Swachh Bharat, mm -hmm. he visited us, okay. had a look at the concept, understood what exactly it is. Then I was invited uh, by the Urban Development Ministry to showcase New Cafe on World Toilet Day last year at the Gyan which was one of the largest showcases because every municipal corporation across the country was there. We are applauded by most, invited by, I guess, everybody uh, to actually set up new cafes in those cities. Uh, then I met, happened to meet uh, our urban development minister, Mr. Mm -hmm. Hardeep Singh Puri, okay. who acknowledged the importance and the sustainability aspect of the entire washroom and helped to push to a great extent. Uh, post that, the urban development ministry invited us to be a part of Vibrant Gujarat. Mm -hmm. uh, as part of the Urban Development uh, Ministries Conclave, where we happened to present the entire showcase to our Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, so things started moving, people started understanding and believing in what we were doing. But that didn't stop us there. We started understanding when it's public, psychology of people in various areas are different. We started reinventing. Today, I guess what you see on the ground is much more finished than what it was and it's still work in progress. Uh, for example, uh, we've understood that uh, water spillage is the biggest challenge. So our floatings are changing. Uh, there are going to be perforated floors which, which are in trademarked and we've done a lot of work on that area where water, when you walk into a washroom, we promise you a dry washroom. Uh, we're working on getting rid of all the handles and knobs mm -hmm. because it has to be the change because if you walk into a washroom, the biggest area which, which carries germs are your door knobs. Right. So we're trying to get rid of that. Then there is a lot of work happening on the WC itself. We're talking about uh, segregation of urine and uh, fecal matter. 
uh, we are talking about converting P, uh, P into phosphates and nitrates and then get into manure. We are converting the fecal matter into manure as well uh, through recycle. We are talking about uh, no water WC. No water urinals have become old, mm -hmm. they are existing everywhere. So we are talking about a no water WC altogether. Then we are talking about a dashboard which gets uh, indications as to how much of fecal matter is converted into manure on a day to day basis. Wow. So there is a lot of work which is continuously happening and global collaborations uh, to get a bottle of washroom to a standard which is beyond and more. Uh, it is important because of two, two aspects of it. Not more than 27 to 30 percent of our waste which comes out of our, I'm talking about the toilet waste, uh, which comes out of any house or corporate offices is treated. 70 percent of it is left in open drains mm -hmm. or stormwater lines. So it's a big yes. threat to yes. the environment. So washroom itself is a big subject which needs to be treated. Now if we can do contribute even through our new cafes or technology and reduce the pressure on treatment plants could help. Second, every time you flush, you are actually consuming two to three liters of water, which is a big, big water footprint. Imagine the amount of flushes which happen in a particular day in a particular city. It's, it's phenomenally high. So if that can be recycled, because it can be recycled, and systems become uh, uh, pocket friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, because not everybody like to go and put in expensive systems at even at home. So that's when the things will start changing. So the entire concept is large. People really don't want to venture. Now uh, people have started talking about it. People have started, companies have started uh, investing into washroom space at large. But otherwise, the place is still wide open. There is a lot more in terms of uh, inventions and innovations which are required in the entire place. So that's where Luke Cafe is. It's a journey which has started, I would say. Uh, uh, good achievements, but you can't be happy with what you've achieved because there is a lot more to be done. Yes. And uh, hopefully, a uh, couple of months later, there'll be a different uh, Loo Cafe altogether because we are planning Loo Cafe Waterloo, mm -hmm. which is in collaboration with British Council. We are working on a Loo Cafe Green, in which we are changing every bit of element into recycled plastic. Okay. Uh, there is something called Loo Cafe Gold, which is going to be lots of tech and innovation where you could really come and use that and be happy. Uh, it's going to be a next-gen uh, kind of a, a, a space. premium a experience. experience. So, yeah, it's, it's important, right? Every time you walk into the washroom, it has to have an experience. So we are trying to build that. Uh, we've already been able to build or rather to some level build a lot of lung spaces around it, which for me are very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why I say lung spaces are important is because as it is, our cities are polluted today. Uh, so having a small corridor, small uh, tucked in lung spaces, maybe vertical gardens or a little green area around the washroom really helps. Uh, yes. Plus again there is learning right? uh, because uh, they give in fresh oxygen. That also helps in reducing smell and various other elements. Recently I was speaking to a very learned gentleman who told me about the chemical composition of jasmine. No. and how jasmine could actually help in treating smell. So, so there was a lot of dialogue, a lot of uh, collaborative approach which we keep doing on a daily basis uh, to take this entire journey ahead. So that's one part of our, uh, uh, our, our life cycle or rather we spend a lot of time thinking and innovating on the washroom subject. Plus we also do a lot of uh, waste management. Mm -hmm. uh, we are into uh, converting food waste to gas. Uh, biogas and we are even talking about converting biogas to CNG. Uh, so there is immense amount of work which happens but I guess whatever we do it's, it's a lot which happens through passion, a lot which happens through uh, a thought to prove something different, try to do something different but in the boundary and scale which we are allowed to reach because sometimes uh, in the in the in aggression or in the in the in the mode of doing something different, you actually step the boundary, which becomes dangerous. So we yes. we actually discuss, decide, but most impromptu dis discussions and decisions uh, sometimes help, sometimes doesn't help. But if you are doing, if you want to be an innovator, uh, two things which I personally feel talk. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people in this world believe that if you have something different, don't talk. Keep it close to your heart. 
I don't need it. Yeah, I think that's changing now. It's changing. You have to talk. Because if you talk, it might become better. There might be critics. 100%. There might be critics. There might be people who want to go and copy it as well. But if you have got your thoughts right, if you have got your concept right, even if somebody copies you, you are the boss. You will lead it. You are going to. Uh, you are the first one. You are the first one. Right. You are going, going, going to get it right, right? Because you are passionately driving it. Second is that amount of conviction and passion you have towards it has to be linked with revenue scale somewhere. Because right. I've realized there's a lot of young startups, including us, at a stage. Uh, you want to drive it. You are passionate about it. But soon you run out of money. No yes. passion, no technology can be driven when the funds are not existing. So you need to constantly balance both. Uh, and if you can't, that's when the challenge comes in and most cannot. Uh, reason is that uh, R&D and innovation generally takes time. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't happen overnight. And while you are passionately innovating, you are running out of cash as well. Because it's, it's, it's like it's driving you. Uh, for you, what you want to really achieve or look beyond and more, but this is important. So first, most important thing is whatever you want to do, get the larger picture right, get your revenue skills right. Mm -hmm. Even if it's sprinkling money, at least the ball keeps rolling in and then right. keep innovating. So you phase yourself because if you don't phase yourself or you create another vertical altogether which is going to feed this. Yeah, uh, it's vertical. going to be the bread and butter and then, and then, then start doing it because if something doesn't match somewhere, uh, it's, it's, it's extremely difficult. Second, third most important thing is uh, have go out, get more people involved in your business. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't That's get important. people involved, uh, what would happen is sooner or later you will run out of ideas. You will, and you could you could have a fantastic idea, but somebody has to be there constantly, pro, uh, constantly discussing, talking, and improving the idea as well. So, so that's important. So you need to get the larger community involved. Could be more startups. Could be more. Um, could be more like-minded people. So it's it's important that you start getting more people involved. Next, be aware of what's happening in the country at large, because if you're doing something, it's it's like this, right? When we were uh, long years ago in marketing, uh, people used to tell us that understand your market before you go sell. You can't be selling red shirts if the white uh, if the market wants white. So you need to understand what you're innovating. Is it with time or is it without uh, something which is way ahead of time? So timing is really important. You need to understand what exactly is what the market is wanting at this particular stage because you might be fantastic, but if it's, it's not enough time, doesn't it doesn't work. It's not really work. So it's it's important that we get the timing right and then be aware about social and economic policies of the nation. Yes. Very important because I see a lot of people uh, getting involved and call themselves startups, but might, might have not even registered as a startup, uh, recognized startup in the country because they might not understand or might not be aware about what's existing. So, so getting yourself aware about what exactly is in the ecosystem at this particular stage, nothing's easy. Uh, trust me, even for us, to get the first things right has been difficult, right? Even to get your forms right, even to get your paperwork right. But it is important. So get the ecosystem right. If not, then seek help because there is a lot of uh, the ecosystem has become much more friendly than it what it was a couple of years ago. Uh, seek help, and I guess there are uh, many young entrepreneurs like you who could actually help and assist younger startups in getting them a clear ecosystem as to what has to happen. And most important thing out of which is patience. You have to be having the perseverance in you to do it all over again in case it fails. That's, I think, what uh, I think uh, God taught me in much earlier in life because I failed a couple of times, failed miserably uh, to an extent that I'm left with nothing in life. So it, it, it teaches you. But even today, uh, not everything can go right. You have to be patient. You have to understand that something might go right, something might go wrong, but you can restart again. So, so that's the kind of uh, uh, internal uh, confidence you need to have. You need to constantly motivate your own self to see a positive day of light. Because I meet a lot of young uh, startups today, and they like after a while they get dejected. Because mm -hmm. not not because they are getting dejected, it because it could be friends and family, it could be peer pressure, 
looking at what's happening with their peers in the corporate life, somebody's traveling a business class but I can't even fly, you know, various <laughs> things which uh, yeah, sure. they come up with. So, distractors, distractors. pullers. Yeah, so, so, so it's like this. So I always tell this to my team. Have Look at the solar system. Uh, you've got the sun in the middle and you've got a lot of planets revolving around the solar system. It's static it's ecosystem is the same thing. Sun is your work. You've got a lot of planets. The planets could be your swanky offices, your cars, your money, all a lot of things could be your planets. But if you're if you don't focus just on focus the core, everything's going to disappear. But if you just keep focusing on the core, everything's going to get attracted towards the core. It's very similar. So so you focus on your work. Keep focusing on it. It'll keep generating the radiance in it to keep attracting everything what you want so it will take a while it doesn't happen Hopefully. overnight mm -hmm. even till late i get jittered sometimes uh, uh, sleepless nights what, what's going to happen next because you can't you you you, you, you are trying to do something different and uh, it's it's obviously your revenue which is important uh, demand which is existing uh, then you need to be fast today's world you can't uh, be complacent before even you think something else is happening and you need to be a, a reader. You need to read a lot. Read a lot. Yeah. So you need to understand the So whatever I do today, whichever part of the world it is, I spend two two and a half hours every night reading, which was not a habit in me. Years ago. So I I have certain keywords. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, put it up on the Google Baba. Try and read as much as I can. That's a very good suggestion for the audience. It's very You need to know your subject. Yeah, you need to study your, your subject. Your keywords, right? your subjects. You need to know what's happening. And trust me, when I realize this, uh, it's very simple. Put up one or two keywords. Go up on the news uh, mm -hmm. category of your of your bar, and you'll realize that five hours earlier somebody did this. Ten hours ago something happened. So things are happening. Things are happening very very fast. So unless you keep reading and read it to a level where you keep thinking to yourself, where am I standing in the line, right? Yes. You could be way behind, so you need to really uh, buck up, you need to be very fast. So that gives me energy every morning that I read, sleep, when I get up, I know, listen, I'm behind, I need to catch up, I need to do something different, I need to push, I need to push my teams, I need to really talk and then interact as much as you can. Uh, it's, it's super important. And sometimes interaction with a different journal, gen uh, different kind of people is important. So, so like for example, uh, I go to schools sometimes. I speak to kids. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they give you different ideas, and sometimes these ideas could be sounding stupid, but actually could be fantastic. So, so we, I guess this ecosystem here interacts with various peoples at various times, and then put them into a funnel, and then we keep talking more, talking more. because that would really help. Uh, so that's helped us scale to the journey where we are. I would not say we have achieved a lot, but yes, there have been considerable amount of achievements over the last three years we've been existing. Uh, sometimes, uh, many, many years ago, somebody told me, in Gujarati there is this phase that if you last your business for 100 days, it's going to survive. Uh, oh, okay. So that, that, that's, what, that's what they said. And actually, if you look at it in a very different angle, your banking lines only start up three years. That's all, thousand days. So that's how they talk. So old day, olden days, they used to say that days, if you if thousand days. days, thousand days, if you last a business for thousand days, you will you've survived. You will survive. Uh, and if you actually go and understand the Indian banking system, till the time you've not completed your three balance sheets, nobody will even give you a single rupee. That's so so that thousand days is very important, and you need to be focused on one particular business getting that right whether and getting the paperwork right because again uh, 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 something which has been a learning for me is a lot of people start mm -hmm. without having a clear uh, private limited or an LLP when they start just the they've already six months seven months down the line they wasted six months now they want to restart the paperwork which is actually going to delay them by another six months before that three year clock in one happens so if you're starting something it doesn't take a lot of money Get it ethically right, get it registered the day one. If it doesn't work, fair, you're going to get rid of it sometime. But if it gets right, which it should be the focus, if yes, it's going to go right, then you're going to complete a three year cycle, then it's always going to be a, the right way you're moving ahead. Because even if somebody wants to invest, 
he's not going to invest have to in, a, up, right? in a in a proprietary concern. He's going to invest in an LLP or a private limited. So so you need to get that paperwork extremely tight. Uh, and today's world, yes, social media is important. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally believe, uh, and I believe it very very seriously. Use social media to your best possible effect in the growth of the organization or yourself. So, like LinkedIn, for example, fantastic mm-hmm. tool. Try and put yourself up. Yes. Try and talk over over a journey of years. Today, I'm on LinkedIn. I've realized people can respond. People have your inbox messaging. You meet people. In case you um, know somebody who is influential, you can actually write him a message. Maybe you might cannot get a response back, but it's it's it, you making your effort, right? And I've made a lot of connections globally mm-hmm. through social media networks, and it, yes. it helps. Why not? So things like this, and uh, that's how we've been moving, and uh, it's, it's happening. So Abhishek, can you talk about the other initiatives uh, which came up in your mind and you know made it successful apart from uh, Luke Cave? So, so Luke Cafe is, is obviously something which uh, we take pride in. Um, it, it's an initiative which is more of a social impact uh, than anything else. Uh, but yes, we are also into uh, base management as I said. Uh, mm-hmm. We talk, uh, we, we personally, uh, we believe that this planet deserves a better base management cycle. Uh, there are a lot of people and uh, stalwarts across the world talking about base management. Uh, but till date, um, I guess there could be solutions, but there is no holistic solution because it's it's a it's a very deep rooted problem. Right? It, it originates from every single individual's psychological change to the end process. So we we are a tiny bit in the entire uh, ecosystem. Uh, we we've started uh, building or innovating biogas plants to start with. We've done a few in the state uh, state as well where we convert food waste to gas and then convert that either the gas which we generate either into CNG or into electricity. Uh, and it's a topic which we are we closely monitor on a day-to-day basis. Um, there are global expertise at this stage and as well as a lot of people across the world are talking about uh, uh, biogas and waste management processes. So we uh, try and understand, lead this entire thing, though we have an entire team who are experts into this entire uh, domain which mm-hmm. talks about waste and we are taking it to the next level. So, so um, I guess the first steps have been fantastic. Uh, in fact, uh, there are a lot of learnings. We are trying to again uh, work towards the uh, pocket friendly kind of a concept where it becomes sustainable for even an individual home uh, to start using this and drive the entire initiative to the next level. So that's that's where it is. So there is a lot uh, which we are working on at this stage and I guess uh, we all revolve around that ecosystem of clean uh, waste, happiness and we have a tagline that says uh, let's spread the joy of clean. So, so, so that joy is what we are actually working on and uh, happy to break it forward. The best part is you're actually closely working with uh, some of the government initiatives and the national initiatives which are there. So it takes a lot of guts to actually deal with government and uh, you know the mindset that yes things can happen with uh, so the government. So what are your thoughts so, so on that? I, I, would, I, would, I would never say this. Uh, it's our nation. We are all Indians. We love our nation. And the government of the land is also fantastic. Uh, there's a myth. Mm-hmm. Uh, which you say that uh, it's difficult to work with the government. It's absolutely a myth. Uh, we are all part of the youngest state in India, the startup state in Telangana. I think, uh, hats down, hands down, this is one of the best states to work with. Uh, you've got uh, the best leadership. Mm-hmm. And I personally feel, uh, because I'm a clear example, I didn't know anybody in the state. I, though I came from the state, I didn't know the ministry, I didn't know the IS officers, I don't know anybody. Around. But if I could do it, why could not other startups do it? It's about the approach, how you perceive it, how you take it across, how do you read the matter, how do you understand what's exactly about social media, how do you understand each government body also has a process to be followed. Right. And if you can follow the process right in the ethical manner, then why are you not going to get what you have to get? Simply goes with Delhi as well, it's a national government. So I've been to the Startup India office in Delhi. Mm-hmm. I think it's, uh, it's better than any of the corporate offices I have ever visited. Uh, That's uh, nice. Uh, the KPMG uh, and ENY as process writers. Mm-hmm. 
they actually run the system. It's a very process oriented uh, business model. Uh, they everything works as per the process and process SLA and timelines. Uh, you have people who you could interact and take advice. Um, so things are things are changing. Things have changed. Uh, uh, so it's, it's it's so nice. It's it's about the approach which we take. Uh, so that myth that oh if you work with a government body this can happen. It could happen, but are you right is what is the biggest uh, importance. Second, are you only there to make money? Mm -hmm. That's something which you need to ask yourself a question. If you do something right, you ought to make money. But if you're not doing something right, then why should you make money? It's, it's that divide which is super important. If you can get that, I think it's fantastic to work with the government. Good. Thank, thanks for the clarity on the myth <laughs> factor because yeah, I think that's very important for a lot of startups even which are uh, just running around uh, AI and technology and you know there are a lot of social initiatives for the nation which can be uh, handled by some of these startups. So I think say for example you're talking about AI, fantastic. Mm -hmm. But what's important is are your is whoever is doing something is he up in the game with the global world? Now, there is again something which is very important which we need to all realize, like even I realize this. When you innovate, you think that's the best in the world. First, you need to be a critic of your own innovation. Right. That's that's important because that's when the rumors or the myths starts coming in. You've innovated, you've done something, you feel that's the best in the world, you cannot take criticism for what you've done. Right? You, you will always get offensive that, oh, this is the best. You first have to create something Look at the global scenario. Is there somebody better than you mm -hmm. from any part of the world? If there is, would you like to collaborate? What are the tools to collaborate? And if there is not, and you are genuinely the best, then you need to have a process to take it forward to the world. And if you follow these two, three angles rightly, I think it's there are several success stories as well. It's, there could be failure stories, but you need to really look at those failure stories as to why, what, and why what went wrong. There could be some which is which had to be successful but failed. Could be a uh, iota of luck somewhere, but that's there. That's part of life. Good. So, do you want to talk about uh, the initiative of uh, the dog park? Which, uh, so, dog park uh, truly is a government initiative. It's okay. it's been conceptualized by a fantastic IS officer called Hari mm -hmm. uh, She uh, made the entire park in place, and we managed the place today. Uh, but I guess I would I would say that uh, again uh, the as as what I'm saying is the government is changing right these IS officers also have been educated in London uh, they have actually gone through economic schools mm -hmm. uh, uh, they could be having they could be doing great jobs somewhere around the world but they have uh, they have they have constant uh, they have conscious decision to be part of the government and take this entire initiative forward so things have changed they have, they have really think differently. Uh, they look at innovations differently. I guess it's the people and us who need to really support what the change is coming in. That's where I would take it. One thing I've observed that you know, you know, whatever initiatives uh, you take, it's always a premium stuff. You know, it looks good. It's like you know, the fabulous thing. It's a wow approach uh, whenever you know, so whether it's a customer or a partner who is doing it. So, what what's the idea behind that? You 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 made like Sulab complex uh, uh, five star uh, toilet facility yeah, so again for free of cost. So it's it's not it's it's I would say I'm a little uh, bad mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm uh, very I'm a guy who likes something which is perfect. Uh, I get very edgy about small things. Sometimes people call me old man, um, and I'm super passionate. So if it's a look cafe, uh, you would actually. See me standing at a new cafe and selling. Just a couple of days ago, and I was at the cafe selling coffee and chai. I have no egos to do that because it's, it's something which I need to learn. And I was doing it, and I was wearing this black Armani shirt. And the guys buying from me is like, Who are you? I said, I'm working here. He said, No, you're not working here. Who are you? I said, why do you ask me that question? He said, I'm sure a pantry boy or a <laughs> sales boy would not be wearing an Amari shirt and selling coffee. So I said, listen, I, I, I am so and so. So I walked out and made a friend out of him. So but what I learn is when I go stand there myself and understand what exactly is happening on the ground, 
this is different thing than what being in the boardroom and understanding what what's happening with them so every day uh, consciously i take a round at 5 o'clock in the morning i go every location every morning to understand what exactly is happening i have a full fledged dashboard mechanism today which gives me live data mm-hmm. as to what exactly is happening on the ground plus constant measures so there are it's not that we we are right we fail there are all the areas which still needs improvement because we deal with humans to a big extent and the free washrooms uh but at the same time uh what i've realized is that that thing of leadership being in trying to be immaculate or be clear in what is required slowly steadily starts cascading down the team like yes. for example i'm super passionate about my plants mm-hmm. though they are in open domain they are though they are on the streets and often dry up because of various reasons i get super upset uh, because i feel that they should be nurtured equally to the to the look of which is there they should look really nice and green now people have started understanding over a period of time that he is really he gets really upset in case he doesn't see the plants right in that area i'm 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 very conscious of the smell so so, so i love perfume so so and and so, so i'm trying to cascade that so we have got an entire education uh, uh, team here who trains our people because the body odor really makes a difference especially for people who clean the washrooms right uh, so we have been able to establish a training center mm-hmm. which uh, is not about a uh, lot of verbatims it's more about pictorial uh, science uh, over the time we realized that if you uh, in this part of the world people relate them to the film stars a lot yes so if you go back years ago and go to sons you should have you used to always have various celebrities and their hair cuts pasted yes. all around the saloon and men used to walk in and say oh mujhe aisa la hair cut karte the so we incorporate the same thing here so we put this entire thing where everything is pictorial Uh, people walk into the room, understand why it is a need, and everything is related to some pictures. That's slowly changing them to transform, because uh, they are people who have never been in, either never done a job till date, or they are in the first job. They want to really understand, and uh, a cleaner generally feels there is nothing beyond in his life apart from just cleaning those washrooms. But yeah. that's not true. Uh, we've got managers now who was who started as a cleaner. Mm-hmm. Uh, we now are trying to incorporate an entire uh, um, training program or a development program where, in case he gets certain amount of uh, recognitions or written appreciations, he would move to the next ladder. So there is an entire mechanized uh, plan for the cleaning staff at large because ultimately they are the people who are actually running it. Then we started this amazing initiative, which I would call it as a swatch. pledge every mm-hmm. morning every cleaner takes in our system uh, wow. it's a song which is same uh, mm-hmm. that's unique yeah it's yeah. very unique uh, in fact we did that at charna a couple of days ago and there were lots of people standing and looking at what these guys were doing uh, so it's a fantastic thing they actually take a proper pledge mm-hmm. uh, about cleaning before they start their activity and we see uh, that's transforming them because they are actually doing this every morning and that little change makes them feel that something is different that pride uh, when we are working on their uniforms um, we want them to look really nice and smart so again it's a change which you are trying to build in uh, to tell them that listen you are important for the organization important for the society uh, there were there were days where we gone had chai with most of our team staff and imagine a day in hyderabad if those amount of team staff from jhmc are not cleaning your streets it's going to be a night to night right true so that importance if you start building that into their uh thought processes when the change comes so that's that's what we are trying to well abhishek one of the you know uh, biggest things or uh, you know one of the uh, what i like about startups is uh, you build your own team and you know you uh, become an employer so what what's your team size now you know you you, you know uh, yeah, from somebody who's failed multiple times and now is employing x yeah, number they, of people 1000 plus people wow large uh, decent large but uh, i don't believe that you become an employer you are still an employee of the organization you're working for you're one among the 1000 yes you're sitting on the top of the table 
trying to lead it, but it comes with a lot of responsibility because your decisions are going to really get the bread on each of their families. Yes. And if you take a wrong decision, you're going to actually uh, be negative to those amount of, or you're answerable to those amount of employees who, or, or your colleagues you actually have in the system. So scaling up is good, but scaling up uh, with a lot of thoughtfulness is really important. Sometimes uh, you go wrong, but constantly you need to keep reminding yourself that you're not dealing with your own family anymore. You're dealing with a lot many families. That empathy, uh, which has to flow in, is important. With a very, a very clear line, you can't be God. You can't do everything right. right. Uh, which again, entrepreneurs fail to realize sometimes, which I even I failed at a couple of times, that you want to do everything, which is not possible. Uh, that thin, thin line that somebody told me that listen, you can't be God is important. But at the same time, that empathy is also extremely important because you need to be clear as to what your colleagues or your people on ground expect on time to time basis. So your process framework has to be perfect. Yes. Uh, you need to be, uh, as an entrepreneur, you always uh, try and cross the line which you need to stop and say that let the processes take on and you follow the processes yourself first so uh, that's important like for example for me when I started off for uh, a uh, few months I was sharp at time of working office a few months later something went back into the and it started coming at 10.30 uh, then I got a kick on my own butt uh, realized that everybody in the office started coming at <laughs> so then I said realize that no it's not going to work if you if you become complacent, you need to have the process. The process says nine o'clock, so you come at nine o'clock. You you lead by example, and that lead by example cannot just change uh, suddenly. So things like that. Uh, it has to be processes. It has to be an SLA, and it has to be uh, a clear cut uh, thought process which has been planned, mitigated, and educated to the larger group of audience. This is how the organization really works, and. The, the, the rules are similar for everybody in the organization, so that's important. So how, how do you motivate your uh, team members, this large team? So we have got frequent r &Rs. Um, It's like this, your energies are contagious, right? So if you are energized, you have that positive aura among you. Um, I've learned this over time that everybody in this world wants to have somebody who they idolize. Yes. Right? Could be anybody. And uh, if you can lead by example and keep yourself motivated and energized, you will be contagious to a larger That's group right. of people. And if you go across with that larger group of people to your shop floor people, they are going to get energized themselves. So how is this entire flow of energy going to come in and flow is extremely important. I think that's the uh, crux of the entire uh, matter. And uh, yes, we have r and functions, we have games, we have sports, uh, we also have educational functions. We communicate aggressively to every single person on the ground uh, and celebrate together. So I'll give you an example. Uh, this time the Ganesh festival, mm -hmm. uh, you see uh, every year there used to be a lot of people and I used to keep wondering why every street get jammed people are dancing, what the hell is happening, you know, that's the typical psychology, don't, don't get me wrong. And uh, sometimes you wonder why, why is all this, why is this entertaining, mm -hmm. why should you do all this? Do it in the right direction. But this time I started realizing I was actually standing in on time for a very long time and even my uh, teammates were enjoying dancing and having a lot of fun the deep research in town. I realized there are not a lot of avenues for a larger group of audience, a larger group of the society at large. These events bind them bind together, together yeah. and they let them vent out their feelings through an emotion of dance or music, which is the best way to do it. And if you start curtailing that, is when the problem will start. But what I realized out of it, for my little example is, I had Lots of people dancing together, enjoying together, uh, people who were not close in office started suddenly binding themselves and they started enjoying themselves and that change 
of enjoying a festival together is something that is also a part of your culture which the companies have to start building or specifically the startups because those little things and specifically indian specifically are emotional right these things connect us That's and it, those connects take you a long way in your journey because your journey is not going to be constant it's going to be high lows and if your team is can stand with you when you are at a low without letting you feel that you are at a low is the is the biggest win is the yes. biggest win because generally what happens uh, i've seen several startups in that ecosystem uh, uh, for one when you go low it's not that you are going to spring you are not going to spring back you are going to spring back but when you go low there is a lot of uh, 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 how do i put it there is a lot of in coordination or uh, uh, people don't really coordinate well people don't want to listen to the management there is a lot of uh uh, uh tug and war kind of a situation which starts cropping up uh, in organizations when they go low and that's the reason it goes into a whirlpool and then disappears because it's not that the organization is wrong it's about people you will psychology which suddenly start changing because of an x situation at a particular time and that is something which you need to keep constantly even when you start to the to the to the journey you need to keep getting your teams to be uh, ready well because a startup ecosystem is extremely important that the entire team in the organization understands that it's a startup ecosystem they could be a low day they will be several high days high days are supposed to be enjoyed but even that enjoyment some percentage of that enjoyment should be kept for the rainy day because i have had times when we had bad days but trust me we had a party on that day we enjoy ourselves on that particular day itself it elevated our moods um, it got the right energy back it's not that having a function or a event could actually change things up but it is the people and the energy right so so if you if you get your teams right so because why i'm saying this is generally you might be doing extremely well you might have a low day and you might have series of low days and that's when the 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 entire essence of the entire team on the mind has to come together rather than they getting disintegrated and if they start getting disintegrated when you're low that's when things start going wrong but if you are together even when you're low things will actually look perfect so that's that's what it is personally what what's your life mantra abhishek happiness uh, i would say my life mantra is do something different every morning so 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 i'm I'm a workaholic, which is not really good. I work uh, 50 hours a day, or maybe more. Uh, I'm I'm not really uh, great with uh, people who know me uh, say that you're mad because I will call them at any time of the day. I tell them, "Oh, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think about it?" And I love doing this, so uh, it's not good. I have a life with time that people have their lives and families, and you can't really bother people. Uh, but yes, fortunately for me, I have uh, some lot of people who are also as crazy as me, and they, you know, this guy is going to call at two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning. I have come to office at three and four in the morning and started work. So, so I'm uh, my life mantra is to keep yourself motivated, keep looking at different things, uh, progress. That's what it should and uh, be positive. That's the most important thing because I've realized uh, I had the wor- as I said I had the worst nightmares, and I'm sure. anybody who sees this video would not have uh, should never go through what i have gone through i have gone through days when i didn't even have food to eat so because i had nothing uh, and uh, it 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 all came back and uh, it happens and i had i had a uh, uh, Even when I was high in life, I did all my mistakes in life. <laughs> so, so, so I did everything wrong in life. So, so I did. So, so it's, it's more like uh, if somebody who knows me very, very well, he's like this guy is totally mad. He's done the worst in life, and then came back, and then when life is going well, also you go and create ruckus for yourself. So, so I've done all that. So that's that's where it is. So, what are the three suggestions you want to give for uh, a startup founder or an entrepreneur? these are the issues in fact i actually spoken a lot about it i think uh, uh, be be patient but impatient it's mm-hmm. two different contradictory statements patient in areas where you need to be patient 
but in patient in areas when you are innovating, you are doing something different. You need to be really up and on top of the game. You cannot be complacent. Then be perseverance. There has to be a lot of perseverance in you because nothing is going to move if you are not constantly at doing what you are doing. And today's world, most importantly, be a people's person. Okay. Because uh, life is changing, world is changing, people understand a different, uh, uh, they believe in empathy, they believe in con conversations, people, you know things have really changed, there, were, there was a different time years ago when it could be different, but today is if you are not a people's person, it's very difficult to actually go through it. You see the biggest corporate giants today want to be the people's person and most importantly step out of your comfort zone. Uh, you see uh, the biggest giants across the world, you keep reading about it today, they go out running. Uh, if they are in wind, uh, they would actually go out wearing uh, a sleeveless t-shirt and want to run in the wind because they want to get out of their comfort zone of the swanky offices and get your bodies into a different terrain. So similarly, it's a startup ecosystem. Never come into a comfort zone. Every day is a new day, started with a new thought process, be persistent. But keep your foundation and your vision clear. That's extremely important. So that's what it is. Great. So any any suggestions you want to give uh, in terms of work-life balance? I'm the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely the wrong person. I have no work-life balance. Um, uh, I, I, as I said, I work 15, 16 hours a day. Even if I'm home, home, I'm home away because my mind's somewhere else. <laughs> uh, so, so I'm not the right person to give that suggestion of a work-life balance because I don't have one, being honest. Um, um, it's just recently that I've stopped living out of a suitcase. Otherwise, I was living out of a suitcase for years together. Um, yeah, so I have no clue. In fact, I need somebody who could coach me on work-life balance. <laughs> Barely see anybody at home. I'm being very honest. Uh, barely see anybody at home. Uh, uh, I have this uh, weird thing which keeps playing in my mind most of the time. Uh, I want to do it like that difference, right? That I, as I said, it's 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 a it's a race which you're running, which is good on bad, but uh, you want to achieve something good. So I'm I've got a different thought process in life. I believe uh, my life is a journey. A journey to accomplish something, and I look beyond life. So I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't really get attached to this uh, journey of life with a lot of friends around me. Mm -hmm. I want to walk this journey to achieve something and create an accomplishment of a name beyond my journey. Uh, so that's my way of thinking. So I do not, I'm not one of those guys who will find that uh, he gets really upset if he doesn't reach home at this particular time. Uh, you might say that, oh, he might not have pressures from home. It's all the same as you. I get a lot, I'm under a lot of pressure. Why are you not home? My mother calls me. All that happens. But uh, but I am not, now with time, we all realize that uh, this guy is not one of those guys who uh, gets uh, into that kind of a shell of leaving everything. So they leave me alone to to do what I'm doing and uh, my, the most important thing at the time your conscious is clean and you're doing something right it's, it's perfect so, so that's where it is now Abhishek there is a lot of downsizing a lot of industries are down a lot of uh, you know employees have been you know let go uh, because uh, the industries are not doing uh, good whether it is telecom automobile uh, banking so what do you suggest and do you have any suggestions for some of these uh, people who are coming out of uh, these industries who are having experience only in a specific domain? See, it's, 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 it varies from people's mindset to others. Uh, everybody of us uh, has gone through various downsizings in our past. Uh, either you've been, uh, you've been a part of the downsizing or you are one person who are doing the downsizing. So, so you mean you've gone through all of this. There is goodness in everything which happens, whether you are you've left an organization or you are a part of the organization, the only thing which we need to understand is if you are out of an organization, you need to put your thoughts right. So I'll give you an example. When I quit my job, first day, I did it on my own decision that I wanted to quit my job, 
I came out and I was like, what am I doing? A good leader should be quitting it. Now what am I going to do? So somebody called me and said, why did you apply immediately on a web portal for getting a job you have now? I said, yeah, I should, yeah, I don't know why have I done this. <laughs> why have I quit? I, don't have no, I have no idea what I'm going to do. So I logged down. They told me, I'm not going to name the website, but they told me to go up and pay that amount of money so that execute a search engine and stuff like that. So I did that. I, but I was not happy doing what I was doing. So one important learning there was be very clear what's your achievement, what what gets you happiness and is that going to be constant or is it momentary just because of the situation that you are. So that decision most of us can't really take because we take decisions depending upon the situation and the moment where we are. So we need to be stepping ourselves out of that particular thing and saying this is what I'm going to do in my life. I could not. So as Indians, I went to a astrologer. I said, listen, tell me what's going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, you I did that? Yeah, actually did that. <laughs> tell me what's going to happen. Is it, am I going to be rented? But how the hell can somebody tell you whether you're going to be rented? But okay, you're, you're, you're scared. So then I came back and I said, okay, 10 days, I get a job. That means I'm going to work. That's, your That's my destiny. Otherwise, I have to be an entrepreneur. Trust me, it was 10th day and I kept flipping coins, I did all that nonsense because I had no clue where my life was heading. Though I took a decision that I want to quit and do something of my own, I was still, because I didn't even tell my family that I have very good a job. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew that I have good a job. <laughs> so, I didn't know what to do. And your, your paycheck at the end of the month is not going to come in. So, so you didn't know. So, 10th uh, day, I did not, I said, now nah, is the time. I need to get away from what am I doing, get my mind clear exactly what I want to really achieve in my life or really do in my life. Even if I get a job tomorrow morning, I should not really go for it and I'll stick to what I'm doing. Can I take that decision which is my own decision? Trust me, that piece of self-thinking, putting yourself away from the world, away from the moments, away from all the negativity or positivity which you are thinking at that particular junction, I took that call. Exactly 14th or 15th the day, I, know, I got a fantastic job offer. I just shut my computer and I said, no, I'm not going to look at it. This is my life. I have to focus on this. And you work. So it's, it's important that how you take a decision, what you want to really do. You might leave, lose a job. You might be in that momentary um, um, uh, phase of mind where you want to go and achieve something and you want to really do it quick because what happens at your end of the month is really important to lots of people in this world. So they, so I'll give you another example. Years ago, I quit my Goa hotels and again, you know, you want to do something because in India there's that myth, right? That a boy cannot have uh, a job or how can you be a job? You have to be doing something, you know, that kind of thing. What will I go tell the society? What do I do? So I stupidly, sitting in a coffee shop, somebody said, you have the knowledge, you are trying to do this. Okay. Good idea. Sab hotel wale chalte hai, travel agency kar lete hai, paise kama lege, aise se travel bada denge. I went and invested. 15 days I lost everything. Because, <laughs> because the issue is, you are taking those impromptu decisions. Take it, then stick to it. But then you lose your nerve if something goes wrong. Yeah. Either I would not say me taking a decision of opening a travel agency in an interim kind of a situation was wrong. My decision of not sticking to it was wrong. Yes. So if you take it, there will be some hardships, or it could just fly. But you need to be clear about what you're doing, and I think that clarity of thought, if you get that right, if you're out of job, keeping emotions aside. Is if you can do that, it's fantastic. Now, the challenge comes in by a lot of people saying, Oh, listen, I have a home loan going on, I have a car loan going on, I will have to downsize. No, you don't. You need to face it up straight. There are options available. Sometimes they are not. You might get a little delayed in certain amount of commitments, but you face it up straight because you cannot run away from a situation. And 99.9% .9 times, Issues happen when you start running away from situation or 
प्रोकास्टिनेटिंग इट फॉर द नेक्स्ट डे और कपल ऑफ डेज लेटर से इन ओके अभी मैं दस दिन बैठ के सोचूंगा क्या करना है उसके बाद देखेंगे बाय देन यू आर ई एम आई स्टार्ट एटिंग देन यू अगेन कम इन टू इमोशनल टर्म ऑयल एंड देन यू टेक अनदर डिसीशन दिस डिसीशन आर स्पॉइलिंग इट अर्लियर द बेटर इट हैज टू हैपन टेक अ डिसीशन स्टैंड बाय इट एंड देन गो विद इट वॉट्स गो हैपन वर्स्ट नथिंग इवन इफ यू फॉल there will be an again an opportunity to rise and stand back i know several people in this world who have gone into dumps they have nothing left and they are going to come back and they will fantastically well so so things happen there is nothing it's that decision making ability at the right time and that decision has to be truly yours not even your family's yes because another example i'll give my father was a dental surgeon my grandfather was a dental surgeon my great grandfather was a dental surgeon and a uh, uh, five generations of dental surgeons so as you grow in the family of doctors you ought to be a doctor <laughs> so so i was ought to be a doctor <laughs> uh, so i started off and see i think that's when the influencing aspects start coming in so uh, i went and joined medical school after college Mm-hmm. I was a decent ranker in science, so ought to my parents felt that he'll be a doctor. They helped me to get a. Now, when you're building yourself, not many can stand back and make a decision or carve themselves at an early age of life. So you actually flow, and because you're getting good grades in your school, you like no, I will be doing this. Maybe you're not cut off for it. So I went and joined a dental college. Uh, first year through, I ought to be a doctor. so my dad used to take me out into and get me into his clinic into to hospitals and make me understand he put in all the efforts but he was a very man with a different kind of vision so he always felt that this guy is not somebody who is calf to see blood uh calf to see so he used to tell me what the hell do you really want to do you really want to do this so like for a while i kept saying yes yes, yes. Hey, thanks abhishek for taking time and you know doing this uh, interaction with us this is almost like a autobiography of abhishek nath uh, we want to look that's back a, in future that's a very, <laughs> very very large word yeah but thanks a lot for taking time out and you know showing and uh, sharing these insights with uh, the audience thanks abhishek and all the best with uh, whatever you do and with all your crazy ideas thank you so much uh, ravi i am sure uh, whatever you doing with your and that startup space of getting us with a lot of startups uh, i guess it's going to be phenomenal uh sharing and learning is something which is important and the key um in fact i would suggest or request uh, we should take this initiative much larger where we could even use our office spaces mm-hmm. in fact we've also got a fantastic dog park i would yes. request you to do some startup conclaves and uh, functions there uh where we could actually help startups uh and take this entire initiative much uh, uh much much more larger for our city and the nation Uh, so any help any support from our side more than happy to help people use the facility here whenever you want to for meeting or interacting with startups and it's fantastic thanks a lot